All right. Uh, today is uh, Monday, February 20th, 2012, and I'm here with Dr. Jasmine. Good morning. Good morning. So um, <clears throat> you'd uh, mentioned um, you'd like to talk about kicking meds and symptoms the easy way. And yes. uh, specifically, um, uh, tell me what you just said about uh, the sort of the common symptoms that um, you're being presented with out there. And um, where, you're in San Francisco, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And your uh, uh, your chiropractic cl- uh, clinic out there. Yes, chiropractic clinic and with family. Um, common questions and. Um, are, are people asking for help in regards to reversing diabetes? Most of them don't even know <clears throat> that diabetes is reversible, yet they're asking for help with diabetes. No way. Most people don't realize that it's only a, about a two or three day deal to turn around diabetes. No, no. It's amazing they're... to me how um, insular uh, people are about getting information these days. Because it's all here. I mean, you know, ain't no one that told me specifically that you could get over diabetes in a couple of days. I just figured it out with our clients. Anyway, go ahead. So diabetes and what else? Diabetes, adrenal fatigue. Okay. Um, weight gain. Mm-hmm. Um, well, their their goal is weight loss. Um, mental fogginess. That you know, memory problems. I keep hearing about problems. And then I, I laugh because so many of these things are just. Um, Cleared, all cleared by bliss or um, just by proper nutrition. Um, see, those are the main ones diabetes, weight gain, um, adrenal fatigue, and weight loss, which all actually also lead to depression. So, um, or tend to contribute to depression. So, those would be, I would say, are my top five. Well, I mean, one of the things that's probably really um, maybe a new concept for a lot of people is that um, disease versus ease or pain versus comfort or illness versus wellness, uh, each one of those endpoints on the, you know, your continuum of how you feel, they're really a function of uh, habit, primarily what you put in your mouth. It ain't, it ain't a habit of, it ain't a, um, a function of uh, time passing. That's like saying, you know, uh, aging is a function of time. Aging is a function of what you put in your mm-hmm. mouth primarily. And, you know, to a certain degree, other things like, you know, you, you're you best served to have some light exercise and uh, drink good water, have uh, live in a temperate climate, get plenty of sun. And for the most part, it's what we put in our mouths that either, um, you know, in, improves, increases, or decreases our uh, health. So... Um, mm-hmm. Um. Yes, I mean, I, I, so I see families, you know, I work with families and I'll see the younger children and kids in college who, um, who is still like healthy and vibrant and, and they're eating all the foods and doing all the same things as the older people who are not as healthy and not as vibrant. And so, so they contribute it to age. Well, see, this is the whole thing about uh, what people say about genetic predisposition. Oh, that oh, that runs in my family. Yeah, I, I've seen countless uh, people that will say, you know, um, well, chronic sinus and respiratory uh, congestion runs in my family, and also um, breast cancer. Well, congestion is the first stage of cancer. And, you know, if you look at the way these people eat, they're eating a bunch of grains and uh, dairy products and animal products. It's not that, you know, sinus and respiratory and cancer uh, challenges run in their family. It's what they're putting in their mouth. And mm-hmm. even, even, the, even the truly genetic anomalies, in other words, um, uh, slight uh, mutations, will typically, um, it's like if you if a person's blind, their hearing is better. So even if you've got a genetic an- anomaly that uh, reduces function in one area of tissue or organ or gland, that usually means that some other area kicks up a notch. Mm-hmm. So it's not really that uh, even genetic anomalies don't really uh, mean a death sentence. All that means is that, um, you know, if you've got a, if you think about your body as a, like a um, a Maserati or a Ferrari, 
and you put diesel fuel in that puppy, eventually it's going to come to a grinding halt. Yes. Right. I mean, if you, if you, if especially if you tr have a truly genetic anomaly or you're very sensitive to uh, chemicals or something, then all that means is that you are required to be more cognizant and make better choices of what goes in your mouth. It yeah. don't mean that you're going to have some symptom. That, that that's a, again, that's a function of what you put in your mouth t typically. And, and I'll, I'll give two. Um, I'll give two or three really quick. Um, uh, examples of how people have reversed their uh, challenges. Uh, one is a, uh, a person that had been uh, blind in one eye for 20 years and um, was losing her sight in her other eye and that's why she came to us. And uh, she was on a very limited uh, income so all she could afford to pick up or uh, I think she picked up uh, salt and um, sunfire salt and primal digest are enzymes and uh, camu camu the vitamin C powder from um, uh, the rainforest and she called me in five days and said the the eye that she was going blind in it completely cleared up and the one she'd been blind in for 20 years she could see silhouettes after five days and after wow. 10 days she could read out of the eye that she'd been blind in for 20 years. So see, uh, th this whole thing about, you know, di diabetes is irreversible, blindness is irreversible, anything. If you're you know, going to a doctor and the, the word irreversible comes out of their mouth, you better fire them for incompetence or stupid and go find somebody <laughs> smart. And an another, um, another one comes to, to mind is a woman that came to us with uh, chronic uh, neuropathy, which is the end stage of diabetes where basically your fluid passages uh, collapse and um, the, the fluid interchange begins to uh, atrophy or reduce and then stop going to extremities, uh, usually hands and feet. And so she was scheduled for a radical amputation of her hands and feet, both of them, both hands, both feet in 10 days. She said, is there anything you can do for me to help? And I said that I was willing to work with her for a few days, and my only request was as long as she was making progress, she'd simply deferred her operation. Because if I told her that we'd fix that in two days, then she would have sabotaged it some way, right? I figured that out. You can't tell people that, you know, you're going to, you know, pick up your, what, what's the thing in the Bible where Jesus tells the lame guy to pick up your pallet and walk? You know, if you tell people that they didn't pick up your pallet and walk, they're going, <laughs> nah, I don't believe that because I can't walk, right? So um, uh, she, she got some uh, chocolate bliss and um, uh, primal digest, sunfire salt again, the normal things, and uh, probably also some vitalized to clear out her lymphatic system. And uh, she came back in um, 10 days, or she came back in uh, five days, because I told her what we do is first, before we work on your symptoms, we'll build up a little energy in your body then come back in five days, we'll see where you are, then we'll start thinking about how it'll work on your symptoms. So you, um, you, gotta, it's the, you, you probably do this in your practice too. If you tell somebody that they're gonna be somehow healed or you know their symptoms are gonna reverse, they won't believe it. And they'll go about proving that you're wrong. And so I told her, now nah, we'll just build up a little energy in your uh, body and come back in five days and then we'll start uh, thinking about how we address your symptoms. She came back in five days and uh, she had a full return of all sensation in her extremities. Now the doctors were gonna hack off her hands and feet. That's and for, you know, I don't know, 20, 30 bucks worth of, of real food is in essence what it was, she reversed that. And same way with diabetes, I mean, uh, diabetes, um, all that means is it's um, a person's uh, suffering from pancreatic exhaustion, meaning mm -hmm. they're putting stuff in their mouth that ain't real food and their pancreas is having to digest it um, instead of uh, producing longevity substance. I mean, our pancreas is supposed to be doing other stuff besides digesting food and what it was meant to do ever. And because of typically how most people eat, their pancreas is involved in digestion. And so, um, one one interesting um, thing comes to mind. We had a housekeeper several years ago, um, and she could just barely speak enough English that we could understand her. And uh, she came in one day, and she just looked like death warmed over. And we finally were able to communicate <laughs> enough with her to uh, find out that she'd just come from the doctor, 
and her blood sugar was no joke 344 oh my god 344 and so um how is she walking she yeah i know i was surprised she was upright uh and she's still cleaning houses right because she's got to feed her family and so uh, we gave her a bottle of uh, enzymes of primal digest and told her how to, how to take them and she came back in a couple of weeks and completely misunderstood how we told her to take them but the way she ended up taking them was one one primal digest every afternoon somehow she translated the three times a day to once every afternoon but anyway she she took uh, so she'd taken 14 of the primal digest capsules and her blood sugar went from 344 to 177 for 14 capsules of enzymes. That's all she did. And she was eating the worst. I mean, you can't imagine what I know. I, mean, I know. I know. You know Menudo and tripe. And yeah, it's just bad. I mean, you know, lard and everything's uh, fried and cooked into oblivion. Uh, typical, um, uh, you know, Latino uh Tex-Mex sort of. It's not really Latino. It's really Tex-Mex eating. Because the Latinos in in, uh, Mexico don't really eat that way. In Mexico City, they eat, yes, they have, you know, um, baskets and they fill them with fresh produce and they make soups and they... Yeah, I mean, even in the densely populated areas, they eat a lot of fresh food in Mexico, which is the only way you can stay alive in Mexico City anyway. (laughs) Because, I mean, the air quality, I mean, they're so... It's bad. There's so much that they can't control. Yeah, so the, the, the point of all this is that two things I'd like people to take away is, number one, you know, whatever uh, health you have is a function of your habit. Whether you're aging or youthing is a function of habit. It ain't the passage of time or genetic predisposition or any of the, whatever line you've been given ain't right. Well, and, and, and a, major, a major point you're making now is whether you're aging or youthing that they have a choice because people don't know they have a choice to youth. You know, yeah, they see the clock going in one direction, and that's the only way. And that, and and they have a visual of what it looks like as the clock. Yeah, it was interesting to me that you said that uh, you know people weren't aware that they could reverse their diabetes. I mean, even in the raw food community, the in the superfood community, most people think you have to do like the you know the Gabriel cousins go you know, live in Patagonia and pay $10,000 and eat cardboard for 30 days. If I had to do that, I'd eat my gun. I Pardon my French. It was just, it wouldn't work for me. I, I wouldn't be able to, you know, you know, it, it ain't the paying the $10,000, but if I took off 30 days and did nothing, first off, it'd be doubtful if I could eat cardboard for 30 days. And then even if I was able to pay $10,000, take off 30 days, tolerate living on cardboard for the 30 days, is it cardboard? After, I, I, I've never done it. Yeah. Well, I mean, most of the raw food those guys prepare tastes like cardboard. It wow. just has no flavor. It's it's very, um, I mean, the way that we prepare food is very different than most raw food is. And even, even at the end of that, it's the same way with Hippocrates or uh, OHI, any of these uh, uh, you know, oh. technologies that are cleansing sort of health uh, spas you go to. What are you going to do after that? Yes. I mean, if, Especially if, all, if you don't if enjoy all, it. If all you've Especially. eaten is cardboard, what's the likelihood of, that you're going to fix cardboard for yourself and your family after, for every day or after? No. Then you're going to go home and fix the same thing you were fixing before or eat the same thing you were eating before, and now you're, all your symptoms are going to come back. It's just stupid. Better. It sense. It's, it's creating a dependency. Yeah. Right? I, I mean, there, it's um, way better to um, you know, invest in uh, high-quality uh, substances like uh, sunfire salt or, uh, and primal digest and fiesta mole and chocolate bliss. That's why we made all these things is so it's easy for people to do all this at home instead of paying $10,000 and 30 days of your life and doing it elsewhere. I mean, you know. So that, I mean, and that's why Yamaha publishes all our recipes, too. So you can, you know, make really uh, delicious tasting food at home. So, I mean, all the, all the resources, uh, all the resources are available. It's just people have to avail themselves of it. So. And, and bringing it to them also. I mean, most people, if there's some, you know, Coke has, an, if Coke has a new drink, they're everywhere. They're on every corner handing it out. So, well, I mean, what is that? If Coke or some oh, yeah. 
yeah, if they have a new product, they're everywhere. So I am taking it on myself because anybody ex- that I expose to bliss loves it and wakes up to a new possibility. I'm, I'm thankful to people who introduced it to me. So, um, cool. Uh, well, I mean, that's, uh, you know, that's, that's what I'm having for breakfast. Is in fact, I'm, I, I'm gonna have to publish my recipe. I'm making a chocolate bliss now that's got. Um, um, uh, this has got uh, max and and hazelnuts and durian and banana and, and cinnamon. It just tastes outrageous. It's like <laughs> liquid fudge. <laughs> it's a, it's a, some sort of you know tropical tasting liquid fudge is what it tastes like. And, you know, and, and so that's the difference between the way that we approach um, up-leveling health is that I figure, you know, it, given the choice of living on eating, you know, uh, twigs and berries and stuff that tastes like cardboard or things that taste like, you know, Fiesta Mole that's a really rich tomato-based uh, taste or living on chocolate, well... It's pretty easy for people to, you know, live on chocolate, or at least it is for after me. after they've had the option. Yeah, they, most so, people so I, don't realize. So I am taking, yeah. So I'm ta- I am taking it to heart. Cool. Uh, as far as sharing, sharing the bliss and sharing the options, because if only if people only knew, they're looking at. I mean, some, most people won't drive across town for the right grocery store. You know, they'll go. They'll go to places for convenience and um, from habit. Well, and, and so. That, that yes. makes it easy with us, too, because we ship right to your door, so you never leave your house. And yeah. even though, even though I mean, the products that we manufacture are truly food, so, you know, gram for gram, ounce for ounce, they cost more than uh, empty calories. However, uh, we did an experiment, um, I guess, back in 2008 or nine, where a bunch of our um, uh, product dealers went off superfoods for 30 days. And most of them couldn't make it more than a week. The The goal was to go off 30 days and check your grocery bill. Most people could only do it uh, five or seven days. And a, a, on average, uh, the people reported that their grocery bill increased by 70%. Or one person <laughs> went up 90%. Because rule is, I mean, so, you know, I drink uh, maybe two quarts of chocolate bliss every day and have one small meal. Yes. So, you know, if, if you're eating a substantially less amount of food, then the cost of your groceries overall goes down. Oh, and also, you, I mean, the one thing we, um, we really, you know, didn't talk about on your list is weight loss. And the simple thing about weight loss is here's all you need to know. Uh, you know how well you're nourished by the number of hours you forget to eat. It, that's simple. And so, you know, if you're constantly hungry, what you're eating ain't food for you. Wow. I mean, I, that, yes. I mean it's, it's really simple. So, you know, <laughs> I, I eat only about half the calories the medical tables say I got to eat to maintain my weight. So that's wrong. <laughs> so I eat about 1,500 calories a day and the medical tables say I got to eat, uh, I think, uh, 2950 or 2850 just to maintain my body weight. Oh, wow. And so if you'd like to lose weight, simple rule of thumb is you eat foods that satisfy you fast, so you eat just a little bit, and they satisfy you for long, so you go long periods between eating. And if you, if you eat foods that um, uh, nourish you quickly and for long periods of time, then the other side effects like you know, your mental fogginess will turn into intense, extreme clarity and uh, sharpness. And yes. any type of adrenal or any organ fatigue that's going on will just, I mean, all your organs and glands will just re- simply reboot. Yes, I mean, yes. I mean, literally, I mean, you will feel them reboot. I mean, you know, you'll know when your adrenals reboot because your adrenals and thyroids and parathyroid, because they kind of operate as a single system. That's, that's my system that caved on me after two months of being home and going from one beautiful, welcoming dinner oh no not the dinners <laughs> and my daughter so my daughter said to me mom you're gaining too much weight i mean they're not they they weren't used to me get, gaining any weight or you know and i was like why is it overnight it was like my my clothes didn't fit and i thought you know i'm at a zero or a two or you know something small but um i didn't and i just didn't feel right i knew i was taking out my body was not streamlined anymore 
Um, so what does it what was it costing me to go out, to be on a food roller coaster ups and downs as opposed to a sustained energy? Yep. That's I mean, what does it cost a professional? And um, especially if you're passionate about what you do. Well, that's a so. that's a really uh, important ex- uh, additional consideration of investment and uh, return on eating too. Is that you know if you are either uh, in business for yourself or you'd like to be because at this point in the economy you better be or you better be getting there because ain't mm-hmm. nobody taking care of you except you. Uh, if you you know if you depend on you for your check <laughs> your your income then, you know, to the degree that you're living at continuous peak uh, energy, mood, and attitude is, I mean, that, that directly uh, reflects or creates your level of income. And so, you know, if, if a rule of thumb is that, you know, if you're awake twice as long as everybody else, all your competitors, and you're twice or quadruple or eightfold more productive, <laughs> and you live twice or, or fourfold or eightfold longer, <laughs> true, the rule of thumb true. is that, you know, last one standing wins. <laughs> I mean, I look at all these guys that are uh, my competitors in the, the business, the marketing realm, and I look at them, they're just uh, putting together large lists of customers for me when they kick the bucket. Oh, yes. Right, because I mean, I'm look at the way these guys live, and I know I'm going to outlive them unless some you know freak accident happens to me. So you know, it, it, you know, there. if you if you start yeah. if you start thinking in terms also of the investment of uh, you know when you eat when you eat this way, what you get back in um, uh, mental um, equity. I mean, it it's pretty cool. And peace and joy, because I mean, when people are eating, I mean, we're, we're vibrational beings. So if you're if you're consuming something that was slaughtered or was made from just some profane. Um, just for some profane source of profit and has no love behind it. I mean, there is, lo- there is love in your product. And, um, and when you're sick, you are repelling your good as opposed to being healthy and vibrant and saying, bring it on, I feel good. And yeah. then you, yeah. start, you start attracting everything. I mean, you literally magnetically, vibrationally do attract what you require. Yeah, that's a good point, so. too. Really, sickness, <laughs> sickness is really an end point of consciousness that has repelled so much goodness that a person has gotten sick. Yes. I mean, yeah. it's really, it's a, everything starts in consciousness and reflects outward in, in uh, physical reality. And then what, hap- what we do in physical reality feeds back into our consciousness. So, you know, if your consciousness is downscale enough where you allow yourself to live on uh, fast foods and cook processed animal foods, then that's going to depress your consciousness further. If, on the the other hand, you just do something simple like, uh, you know, keep a shaker of Fiesta Mole around or keep a gallon of chocolate bliss in the fridge, then your consciousness will reboot. I mean, there's no way to escape it. You'll come up scale and you'll feel better and you'll have a tremendous amount of uh, energy returned. Yes, and when and neurologically, if you're in survival, your sense of time also shifts to milliseconds. Yep. And yep. you're so you you're you're isolated. Mm-hmm. You don't feel like you have a lot of time. You don't have a lot of resources, and you just make one. You can't help but make one short-term bad decision after another. Yeah, that's yeah. the that's the fight or flight so, impulse. So anytime a person is sick or they're eating in such a way where they're continually down scale, they'll stay in that fight or flight mode where you know everything is right up in front of their face and and deci- decisions or choices are made as reactions knee-jerk reactions rather than thoughtful choices and responses so yes. um well I, um, i'm uh, imagining my next gig is going to be starting up here in a minute so did did we get all your questions answered uh, to start with today to start with yeah, this, the one the one other thing is just vitamin d oh. you know mm-hmm. or vitamin d deficiency is um is running is is a common um, subject now yeah yeah so here's my rule of thumb with vitamin d um uh if you walk out in the sun for 10 or 15 minutes a day um uh that will create enough vitamin d for you to uh thrive now here's the other thing that i have not read any place but appears to me to be the case is that vitamin d contrary to popular belief seems to accumulate so um, the last time that uh, Yaman and I went to Hawaii, I noticed that our tan lasted almost six months. 
almost six months, right at six months. So the rule of thumb is uh, as you absorb Go sun back. and you build up, a, you know, that kind of uh, um, uh, darkening of color, that's yes. really vitamin D building up under your skin. Mm. So the the conclusion or the story I've made up is that I'd never really thought about before is that vitamin D probably gets um, burned up or used uh, at a rate that is dependent upon the quality and quantity of food we eat. Yes. And so I'm imagining that our tan lasted so long because the way we eat simply required very little vitamin D. And you, you, in your skin, your skin allowed mm, you oh, know, yeah. absorption. Yeah. Yes. I mean, if your skin's toxic and your body and being are toxic, then you. I mean, I. I mean, being that I'm, I'm more of a feeler and a kinesthetic type healer. I mean, you, you're either allowing and taking in, or you're repelling with your sickness. So. Right. Yeah. So I mean, good things will, is, you, um, you know, you got to right. have vitamin D to be able to metabolize or digest food. And vitamin D, the best source comes from the sun. If you can't get good vitamin D from the sun, um, I think we sell vitamin D. I don't even know if it's in our price list, but it's like uh, 11 or $12 for a little uh, uh, vial that will usually last for months. Um, and the other rule, and the other, the other rule of thumb is that if you're someplace where it's dark and you have to take vitamin D, uh, start arranging to move today. <laughs> now that may sound radical, but you you know whether you live or die or, or you know barely survive or thrive, that's completely up to you. So you know I have people call me from you know places like Canada and Chicago, and New York, saying they're you know what do I do about my depression? And it's the middle of winter, and my response is freaking move. You know I, I don't know what else to tell you. If you live where it's dark all the time. Yes. You're going to be depressed. Same way yeah. with Seattle. I, I was only able to stay in Seattle for a few months, and it was, you know, cloudy for like two months. I had to wow. leave. Yeah, I can't. I, I'm immediately depressed, or I, I react to to the fog in San Francisco. And luckily, there's usually a place in the Bay Area within 20 minutes that's sunny. Cool. So, so I just shift. Okay, great. And um, All right. Yeah, well, we'll, I have more topics to go over with you, so we'll do we'll record more. Yep. Cool. Well, we'll we'll pick up uh, here in a little while then. Okay. Great. Thank you, David. Take care. You're welcome.